The original idea of harm reduction was to keep you alive if you're struggling with addiction and until you find that miracle of recovery. A few years back, harm reduction had a different name. It was called needle exchange. Its main purpose was to slow the spread of infectious diseases. While that still worked, the program still ended up leaving us with uncapped needles littering the streets of San Francisco. This man was tasked with finding the discarded needles. How many do you find a day? Uh, depends if it's a really good day. Uh, it could be a whole like mound. Oh wow! Pile. But in a whole day, on average, it could be a hundred, could be two hundred. This is a Twitter post of Tom Wolf. Back in 2018, when the Tenderloin Police Department would arrest you, they'd post your mugshot on Twitter. And they said, uh, we continue to arrest Thomas Wolf out here on the street, this time with a bag of drugs at his feet. So Tom seemed like the perfect person to talk to about harm reduction. You've been addicted to drugs. Yep. You've had the ankle bracelets. You've had all that stuff. Uh, stay away orders? Yep. Stay away orders. What were you, what were you addicted to? Um, I was addicted primarily to heroin, and then towards the end, fentanyl, and then crack cocaine as well. Tom was homeless and lived on the streets of the Tenderloin in 2018 for almost six months. So now you're an advocate for? For recovery. So, you know, we're going about this all wrong here in San Francisco. This is hidden camera video of a decoy we used. to hit up one of the harm reduction centers. Because let's be honest, I personally can't just walk into any harm reduction center and ask for drug paraphernalia. With no questions asked, the decoy was given all the tools to do drugs. Everything from syringes to a crack pipe. Two to be exact even aluminum foil to smoke fentanyl. So why are we giving people um, glass pipes to smoke drugs with? Well, that to me, that's enabling, right? So when I was on the street, uh, you yeah. had to buy your glass pipes. They were three bucks. It was called a Happy Meal, about $3. You got, you the, got McDonald's a, wouldn't like that you, name. You got, you, got, you got a glass pipe, you got some Brillo, you got a push rod, it was three bucks. But now they give it to you. Now they just give it to you. Right now what's happening in San Francisco, in certain cases, they're blurring the lines between harm reduction and enabling, and I call that out. Okay. That's part of my job as a guy in recovery, and my advocacy is to call out what's cool, Narcan is good, and what's wrong, giving out foil, straws, pipes. Needles, I'm cool with. But foil, straws, and pipes has crossed the line. I was coming up here, two people laid out in the street, right? Drugs, mental health, you name it. Keep going up further. You see all the tents on the sidewalk, right? What happened to Sit Lie? There are close to 60 nonprofits in San Francisco. And the city divvies out somewhere around $240 million every year. But let me ask you, where are all the people they say that they're giving money to to help everyone who's in this situation? Where are they, right? When you were out earlier and you were talking to my man Tom, did you see anyone walking, trying to help people, trying to ask them, hey, what do you need? What can we get you into? I'm still stuck on the fact that there are almost 60 nonprofits. With different staff, with different CEO or, or uh, presidents. Yeah, it's the money. We wonder, we wonder why the money is, is, goes into the ether. It's like a cancer. A long time ago, they made a statement that why cure cancer when you make more money treating it? it so how do we fix it? Recovery, promoting drug treatment, promoting treatment on demand, promoting even intervention on the street. I required intervention on the street and I wasn't even as worse off as some of these other people, although I was in bad shape. So now we get to say, you've done it all wrong. All of you, you're wrong. This is wrong, right? So that is really important to get out there. It's like, stop with the philosophy. Stop with the ideology, right? This is what we have. I'm done talking about your little dreams, your little utopia. It's not happening. Which brings us back to the Backpack Brigade. From our end, the officers that I know out there trying to work, trying to make the difference, they can only do so much. And then our partner, they got to pick up the baton that we pass them, go forward and get to the finish line. And all of a sudden that baton is dropped. What can we do? We made the pass, we're out here doing the work, we're making the arrests, we're trying to get them into court. Our partners in the criminal justice system and the district attorney's office is supposed to pick that up and say, this is what you need to do. You might need a timeout. A timeout is good for some people. They need a timeout. But don't you think that the, the, even though the dealers make you feel safe, they're contributing to the junkies that make you feel unsafe? Um, of course. Remember her earlier statement? It's the junkies and the addicts and the homeless that are dangerous, not the dealers. It's like a vicious cycle with the disenfranchised spinning in a circle of overdosing. They're being saved so they can overdose and be saved again. There have been cases where some have overdosed and saved almost 30 different times. I have an 18 year old daughter. I raised, born and raised in San Francisco. 
I want her to be proud of her city. This is humiliation of the worst degree. It is an embarrassment. And I, I'm not going to stand here and just let it go. When I decided to cover the Tenderloin, I knew I needed to stay in the Tenderloin. That's in the next edition of Gotham by the Bay. A, a lot of guests are just always uh, amazed uh, when they walk through our doors. In San Francisco, Stanley Roberts.